week. I eat beef a lot. Once or twice a week, maybe. I eat beef twice a day at least. Americans love beef just because it tastes good. I don't know, it's just American homegrown cows, man. You gotta love it. As a country, we do eat a lot of beef. We are the birthplace, essentially, of the hamburger. We're the ones who turned the hamburger into a convenient meal that anybody could have at any time. The average American doesn't understand the typical hamburger they're eating has a huge negative impact on the environment. When it comes to uh, the items in our diet that have the biggest impact on the environment, clearly beef is the worst offender. It takes an enormous amount of grain to produce a pound of hamburger. It takes an enormous amount of water and it leaves an enormous impact on the environment through the vast amounts of waste that are produced. Large amounts of methane, destruction of forests to create pasture land. Beef and the environment? I haven't heard that beef has an uh, effect on the environment. I think everybody needs beef. A lot of the true cost of producing our high meat diet are being externalized to the environment. A cattle feeding complex like this vast layout can be compared to a factory production line with the end product being beef. In the early 50s, farmers were encouraged to shift their paradigm into growing a commodity rather than growing food. If you can figure out how to get a thousand cows on five acres, then you've reduced your capital cost significantly. Another way that they made the meat cheaper was by feeding the cow corn. A cow's stomach isn't designed to eat corn or grain. It actually makes them very sick. That's why the modern factory farm meat industry needs antibiotics. It's really grotesque. About 70% of all antibiotics used in the United States are used in livestock. So we've just taken a natural ecologic system of pasture-based animal production and industrialized it to the point where uh, the ecosystem can no longer absorb the vast amounts of concentrated waste. The happy meal isn't really that happy. You're not really, you know, it's not that happy. It's, it's actually a very sad meal. There are really two ways of raising beef nowadays. One is in a massive confinement style situation and then the other is having small local farms who care about the animals, who care about the impact on the environment. We've owned this farm for 187 years and it wasn't until my father died and I took the farm over that I really sat down and examined what is it that I want to do on this farm, how do I want to leave it. Uh, when I'm gone. Mount Vernon Farm, we raise our animals, how they're intended to be raised, on grass. Our animals move uh, every day or two to new grass, so they are constantly eating the grass down, spreading their manure, where it becomes a nutrient value and not a environmental problem. And it does take more time, it takes more labor, the animals take longer to grow because they're not getting cheap inputs. It's better for the environment and it's better for the, the health benefits of the consumer as well. If there was a food and it's like really affecting the environment, I really wouldn't um, even make an attempt to even touch it. Meatless Mondays is a new initiative here in Baltimore City. The students are choosing, um, we think, healthier foods, more environmentally conscious foods on Mondays and um, actually enjoying them menu items that we offer are approachable and within people's comfort zone. We're not offering tofu and wheatgrass smoothies. When I heard that it was Meatless Mondays, I thought it was going to be nasty, but it wasn't. Meatless Mondays! Meatless Mondays! There are 82,500 children in Baltimore City. If you think about 60, 70,000 of those kids getting lunch every day on Monday without meat and without the burden on the environment that meat places, that can really begin to make a difference. What we wanted to do was get people thinking about, yes, Baltimore City Public Schools is doing a Meatless Monday program. Now why are they doing this? What is the impact? Is this something that I should be adopting in my home? It might sound weird coming from a butcher to be telling people to eat less meat, but the only way it's going to be sustainable is if people rely on it less. 
We are at Marlow and Daughters in Brooklyn, New York. We sell all grass-fed, grass-finished beef, mostly sourced from New York farms. Focusing on local sources means that we're reducing the carbon footprint on all the meat that comes in. We certainly have seen um, an incredible increase in sales. And with that, we've seen an incredible increase in the family customer. Grass-fed beef isn't just better for you, but it's also better for the planet. Elevation Burger was founded on the premise that we could make a difference. I think we are proving that you can have a grass-fed cow at an affordable price, and by doing so, you can have a tremendous impact on the environment. The idea of McDonald's or someone like them selling well-raised beef is not the most unlikely scenarios ever created. Even McDonald's probably sources their coffee beans a little bit better than they used to. Uh, and it, it really does come down to, is, is this a fad, is this a trend, or is this uh, a movement? Food and the environment and energy and health are all interconnected. They're not separate issues that somehow can be viewed in isolation. If you really want to reduce your carbon footprint, the thing to do is reduce your total overall beef consumption. It's maybe not healthy to go and eat a 32 ounce steak by yourself. You know, it's nice to have a a, a six ounce portion or a four ounce portion of beef with really amazing vegetables. I'm in the meat business and yet I totally agree that in the United States we eat too much meat. Each individual customer that comes here and chooses to eat grass fed beef at home, it means that we're able to inject more money into our local farming community. So what I say is let's eat less meat but let's eat healthy meat.